In a statement at the annual general meeting, MassMart CEO Grant Patterson said that the South African economic cycle has moved into an inflationary phase. At 20 November, which is 21 weeks of the 2011 financial year, MassMart's total sales growth was 15.2% and comparable sales growth was 8.8%, with year-to-date inflation at 0.8%. The company has 10 game food co stores and has built its first builder's warehouse outside of South Africa in Botswana. MassMart's got a market cap of 33 billion, a price earnings of 35.8 and a dividend yield of 2.5. Gerbrandt, let's start with you. Uh, let, let's take the 8%, which includes 0.8 of inflation. That's a fairly strong number. We saw ShopRite out uh, last month, not quite as good. These guys are out there and growing. I suppose we can get a bit of a hint from it. We've seen consumer data coming through telling us that the consumer is spending, and they certainly seem to be going through mass market stores. Certainly, Simon, and I think people are probably uh, bargain hunting as well. So you see a lot of macro activity and, and some of its other mass discounters, etc., shops doing well. So. And they're expanding as well in a rapid pace as well. And I think they wanted to open 80 new stores this year uh, going forward. So looking like a nice growth story. But is it priced in? That's the uh, it, it, pricey. We'll touch on that <laughs> in a bit. Uh, what you mentioned they're expanding. They're talking eight new stores. They're going big into the, the Cambridge stores, which is, I suppose, trying to compete more with the, the checkers side of the market. They, they, they're doing the game Food Co. stores at the same time. They're doing the move into, into Botswana. I, I, I can't think that that so much is the Walmart influence. Surely, I mean, Walmart couldn't have done that sort of already just in three months. We're probably still going to see a lot more coming through from them, particularly in the expansion particularly into Africa. Yeah, certainly. I, I think it's going to be a growth story, especially on the stores like expanding, etc., especially into Africa, maybe a push from Walmart's side. But this must have been old plans as well because it takes time for, for uh, planning, etc., to go into new stores and, and where to put it up, etc. So it must have been part of the, the, the previous plans. But uh, very interesting that they're so aggressive so far in the, in the way that cycle are at the moment, especially with... I think the consumers are a bit more under more pressure than most people think. Well, let's get a technical point of view now from Shimagama at our wall. They promise us everyday low prices, but that can hardly be said of that share price. They listed on the JSC in the year 2012 around 50, currently hovering around 151, 55 level. Is this bullish trend likely to be continued from a technical point of view? Okay, well, um, Massport has really been exceptionally bullish throughout um, throughout these months, and it, it actually became even more bullish when it traded above that 147. Um, 100 level. It's kind of peaked at or encountered a bit of resistance at 163.65 and it's failed twice. So there could be a potential double top that's forming there, which would only be confirmed at 138.25. So there's still a bit of downside. The only thing we should keep an eye on is its RSI's resistance trend line, which could be a bit of a nuisance as it could curb further upside. So in other words, if, if MassMart repetitively um, fails to trade above 163.65, um, that could be a caution signal already. Um, with the alarm bells should start ringing actually at 147 because that could see it pull back to its um, major support trend line, which would be this line. So at this point, it's still in, on good soil, but 147 would then, um, alarm bells should then start ringing. Khavant, last week the Finance Minister Pravin Gordon coming out with a statement to say that they will be providing a legal framework on the FDIs and how they will be managed going forward. Cynic saying that perhaps this is too little too late and slightly reactionary given the mass mart Walmart deal. What is your take on this and the fact that three ministries have actually opposed this deal and are wanting the Competition Appeals Court to be more stringent with their requirements? Now look, I think from a South African point of view and the jobs etc and manufacturing side it's probably a bit concerning. Uh, but if you look at what our consumers are paying for, for products uh, relative to what they paid five or ten years back in South Africa, we certainly has gotten very expensive on, on that side. So maybe a good thing for the consumers, uh, but I don't think on the employment side in the manufacturing space, you probably need to be a bit worried of, of imports, etc. But I think they laid the ground rules nicely out with, with everything that went on over the last few months on the deal. So I don't think it's going to be a huge factor. Uh, but certainly something for some of the manufacturers locally to be a bit worried about. But certainly, if you're not competitive in a global village, uh, you probably shouldn't be in business. Gerbrandt, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Rufilo mentioned, in f uh, the way actually she was quoting the CEO, inflationary phase, we're entering it, we saw CPI out at 6%, or the core CPI much more closer to the 3.5% level. And if you look at the inflation, mass discounters, deflation of 55 macro deflation of 2, mass board flat, mass cash, the only one with inflation at 5 
My thinking is typically that inflationary phases kind of help the retailers, gives them a little more pricing power, and certainly their other products, their, their, their petrol costs, their electricity costs, their staff costs are rising. They actually want a little bit of inflation? Certainly, I think they want to put some prices through to consumers as well. They, they weren't able to do that over the last two to three years with the currency as strong as it was and with inflation as low as it was. So that, that's a positive for all retailers going forward. And I think for the likes of, of, of the producers, etc., that's, that's a positive sign as well. Normally, that's a nice place to hide when you have inflationary pressures, etc. Uh, my only main concern here is that this share price do look very, very rich at the moment. And a lot of good news is priced in, and I think all of its expansion and probably all of its Walmart price um, or competitive advantage going forward is priced in too. So that, that's the main concern uh, in MassMart. We know it's a great business. As Simon just said, it is positive for them, inflation coming through a bit. We saw CPI this morning coming in at 6% mm -hmm. as well. We know PPI has been like 10% over the last two months. So that should be beneficial to them. But at these uh, margins and these high prices that they currently have, it's... Uh, a bit of a concern. I think I'm going to guess what your vote is going to be. But before we get that, let's just get a final technical comment from Mushima. Not only are we seeing divergence on that RSI, but we're seeing a little bit of contraction. It looks like it's been narrowing over the last year. What does that mean? Well, that's a lot of uncertainty that's happened throughout the with the news flow with it. That's why it was then held at that 147. But having bridged that level shows that there's still more buying interest. But it seems like people could be thinking, or investors could be thinking, it's a bit overextended. Um, if it does pull back, it would still be within its major bull trend. So that wouldn't be a train smash. It would just be a mere, uh, well, a, a retracement within that bull trend. So, like I said, it's still in good soil. Um, but we just, if we really want to see more upside towards new highs, it would have to really bridge that 163, 65 level, or else it could then go down to 147, where people could then pick up, I suppose. And so would you give it a hot or not, MassMart? At this point in time, I would give it a lukewarm. Lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why. Because of that sideways pattern that's now forming. Until we see it breaking, either way, would we then be able to be more judgmental on it? Lukewarm because of that sideways pattern that's emerging. Hevrant, I think I'm going to guess what you're going to say because you think MassMart is hugely expensive despite their promise of every dollar price and you don't buy in that in terms of the share price. What are you voting for it? Hot yeah, I'm going hot nut. Uh, I'm going not hot. Not hot. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's just too rich for us. Uh, there's no margin of safety in, in these numbers and I think a lot of, lot of good news is priced in. And it's going to take a few years for this this share price to probably to come down as well. But I'm not willing to pay um, <coughs> an excessive amount or be multiple for for a company like that. Well, let's consider the fact, Simon Brown, that they've kept their dividends consistent over the past five years. So clearly, investors wouldn't be holding it for their dividends at all. What other reasons would they want to hold it, given the fact that Hebron is saying a lot of it has already been priced in, the good news is already priced in? You're holding it because they're going to take over not just Africa, but the world. And in truth, that's probably what Walmart exactly wants to do. And, and I suppose in part, they, they're, they're moving to that. Dividend yield of 2.5, you know, long term, that's above the long term average for our market. But in the current market, you're getting juicy stocks at dividend yields of 4 or 5. 2.5 is not exciting. This is a great company showing great numbers and you are paying top dollar for it. I would like to see earnings double price say the same, then I think it becomes cheap. And at the moment, great stock, but oh, too expensive. For that reason, not hot. Too expensive, not hot for Simon Brown. Let's sweeten things up now. In its interim report for the six months ended 30 September 2011, Elovo Sugar posted a 12% rise in earnings, helped by currency weakness and cost cutting, but said output was still struggling to recover from a 2010 drought in KwaZulu Natal. Diluted headline earnings per share totaled 62.9 cents compared with 56.2 cents in 2010. Revenue rose 7% to around 4.5 billion rand. In lieu of a dividend, the company declared an interim capital reduction distribution out of share premium of 23 cents per share. Elovo has got a market cap of 11.7 uh, billion, 21.4 is the price earnings, uh, dividend yield of 3.1, but as if you were said, they pay a share premium, so there's a tax implication there. Hebrant, I suppose I want to look at this and say, not bad set of numbers, revenue up 7, headline earnings up 12, operating profit up 19, not shooting the lights out, and there's some issues we can delve into in a moment. On the surface, not a bad set of numbers. I think a decent set of numbers. We, uh, we also know that they had a rights issue about a year ago, yep. so there's a bit more shares in issue as well. So with that in mind, it, it certainly is not a bad set of numbers. Um, they had revenue increasing about 7%. Um, the um, headline earnings per share growing about 5%. So not a bad set of numbers. But again, the price you pay... <laughs> 
Yeah. It's a bit of a problem. One thing they are doing is they're holding the operating margin. At, it edged up slightly. It sits around that 25, 26 percent. I've got to say, I was surprised that, a, that a, in essence, a farming company gets that level. I mean, I, the farmers I know tell you it's, it's, you know, it's tough to make a dime, and, and these guys aren't doing too bad here. <laughs> Don't believe them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great margin for, for a company, uh, but to expand that margin is probably going to be much more difficult uh, going forward of, of our uh, a lofty margin already so it's certainly a company that um, has an interesting mix of operations uh, if you look at the alcohol f plant that they yep, do they're have they're big they on alcohol they're actually, they're actually selling power to Swaziland power to Swaziland which is 2% of the revenue at the moment so very interesting they're trying innovative stuff uh, but of course you hampered by weather and it's very cyclical the specific company. We'll elaborate on those innovations more a little bit later, Khabran Fushima. Ilova coming out with an impressive set in interim numbers, but that downward channel is not looking too good. Never it's mind that break in the long term support. I take us through the chart. No, I mean, this is quite sad. It's really loyal to this <laughs> bear trend that it's engaged in. But what is very important is it's testing the support trend line of its overall primary bull trend, which is very cautious signal there because if it trades below 2140 that then confirms a negative breakout of this entire bull trend which is really really bearish if we zoom into the bear trend bear channel rather here I tested the upper slope and because it's failed the next move is to go to the lower slope um, because the RSA is not really giving us more information we need to keep a, cl a close eye on that major support trend line because if that fails to at least inhibit further downside that 2140 selling level would then be triggered so at this point, it will probably continue teetering on it until s buyers or sellers give in. In this case, it looks like the sellers will probably be the ones who dominate. Khabrant, if we look at the contributions to operating profit by country, Malawi is sitting at 45%, Zambia is 33 Tanzania is 13 Mozambique is 4 Swaziland is 3 SA is 2%. I had two problems reconciling these numbers. Firstly, the biggest economy on the continent making the smallest contribution. And then further down in the report saying that Malawi has difficult economic conditions and yet a 45% contribution. How do you reconcile that? Yeah, look, I think it's a... <laughs> Uh, pr probably something to do with what farmland costs where, where you can actually grow sugar cane. So I think in South Africa it's probably just gotten too expensive, especially in Natal uh, with coastal properties etc et going up in 2003 to 2008 type in uh, the property residential market. So probably sold a bit of their properties on that side, made a bit of profits and, and moved some of their operations where they could get the suitable uh, land and at the right price. So that doesn't that doesn't bother me too much because I mean they anyway exported to Europe and all over the world. So I think if you can actually do it cheaper in a different country, that's fine. I was just a bit amazed on, on those figures because I actually thought they still do make a bit more in South Africa. Two percent was, so <laughs> was astounding. And Mishima, I want to come back to you on the wall. You talk about that twenty-one forty level. If that goes, and I, it, it's an if, it hasn't happened yet. Really, eighteen becomes that target. Could we then perhaps expect a, from that point a bounce up at that bottom sort of trend line and and, and give it a bit of a bounce, but perhaps a, f a false hope for people who think that it's turning. Precisely that trend. This well, this major support trend line as I said, is very paramount in the SAGE because it could then give us the direction of whether there is a bounce. But I would really be happy if it goes above 29.05. That would then confirm a negative breakout of this bear channel. But if it really fails to bridge that upper slope of the bear channel, uh, I mean, it could really bridge that 21 pretty easily, which would completely end this entire bull trend. Mushima, you're sounding overly, overly cautious. Should we change your name from Mushima to Prudence? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is what the chart is telling us at this point in time, and I wouldn't really get excited to go long because it's testing that support trend line until it actually breaks out of its bear channel. If it still remains loyal to that bear channel, then downside is really imminent. Sounding like a lukewarm to cold. Then, no, this Ilova. is freezing cold. Freezing cold. Kevin <laughs> Smith, hot or not, Ilova, for you? Um... I'm going to go not hot, uh, but I think there is a lot of uh, positives as well in this company. We know the currency plays into their favour as well. We know there's a shortage of sugar in the European Union, etc. So maybe not the right place to have a shortage at the moment. <laughs> but there is some positives, but I think they probably need another year of decent results uh, to convince me. But at this stage, the, the, the fundamentals are a bit too expensive still.
too expensive, too not hot in studio for Ilobo Salmon Brown? Should we not be encouraged by the fact that they're looking to go into renewable resources? And what is this transition going to be? Are they now going to become Ilobo Energy as opposed to Ilobo Sugar? I think it's great. I, my friends down in Durban are going to be getting their power from sugarcane. I mean, they've been <laughs> driving past these sugarcane fields for hundreds of years, and some of them drink the alcoholic byproduct from it. Now they can get some power from it. But it, it, yeah, there's two things to it. Hebron talks about the, short, the, the shortage of sugar in Europe, and as he says, not a great place. But what happens when there's a shortage? Everyone goes on massive capacity increases, which what's happened in you know, soft commodities, and that takes it away. The flip side is, is the, 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 to me, the key line from the, from the report. 2010 drought in South Africa, which severely retarded cane growth and caused cane quality to be downgraded. And, and I think severely was probably a polite word. I think farming is tough. You've got weather issues. You've got the guy down the road trying to plant more than you. You've got all these type of things struggling against you. I wouldn't want to be a farmer for anything out there. I think kudos to those who do farm. I'm going to say yeah, we need to get on with it. Do I think Ilovo is hot? No, nope, I think it is decidedly not hot. Not hot. Thank you, not Simon Brown, Farmer Brown.